Prime Minister Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim wrapped up his one-day official visit to Nanning, China, where he met with Chinese Premier Li Qiang and other top ASEAN leaders. This makes it the fourth high-level summit between Anwar and Chinese officials since he took office last year. Now, according to researcher at ISIS Malaysia, Angeline Tan, now this signals greater commitment by the Prime Minister to strengthen existing ties with the world's second-largest economy. I think the highlight of Prime Minister Anwar's visit is his one-on-one um, -on -one meeting with the Chinese Premier Li Tian. And of course, everyone's really talking about the three um, MOUs that were signed during his visit and how it amounts to nearly 20 billion ringgit. And all of this agreements and MOUs aside, I think actually for me, what really matters is this is Prime Minister Anwar's fourth face-to-face um, -face high level meeting. And you know, with face-to-face -face meetings especially, I think it's invaluable. You're able to talk about issues a bit more candidly. You're able to hint at nuances that would otherwise be lost if you, it was over a phone call or if it was over a video call. So I do think that um, Prime Minister Anwar's visit to China this time around, it really signals that he's very committed to the China-Malaysia relationship. Um, and it, I think it also goes to show that second to ASEAN, China does seem to be among uh, the Prime Minister's most prioritized international partners. During his visit to the southern Chinese city, Anwar also said that to maintain peace and stability, Malaysia and China agreed to have continuous and open communication on the South China Sea issue. I think it's encouraging that the Prime Minister was able to raise the South China Sea issue uh, with uh, the Chinese Premier and they were able to talk about what they want the South China Sea to look, which is stable and peaceful. And it seems as if everybody has the same kind of aspirations and goals, but I, it's very clear that everyone is not um, on the same page with what is actually happening in the South China Sea. So at the moment, tensions are definitely on high, but I also think that the bulk of the tensions have not quite reached Malaysia at the moment. We still continue with uh, back-channel diplomacy, which has been working uh, for us in the past few years. It's, it probably will help um, in our diplomacy with China in the South China Sea at the moment. But definitely, I think it's a great thing that the Prime Minister is raising it candidly in the meetings um, with his Chinese counterparts. Southeast Asia is an important geopolitical arena where the U.S.-China strategic competition is playing out intensely with Malaysia, a crucial regional country. Now, how can Malaysia navigate rising tensions between the two superpowers? I think it is definitely impacting the perception of where Malaysia is aligning to. And it is a bit of a surprise, right? Because when uh, the prime minister first came into office, there was a lot of speculation that he would be pro-US or uh, Washington leaning. But as you said, he has had a lot of uh, high level exchanges with the Chinese. And if you compare it to the US, it doesn't seem that, as if, there, if there's the same kind of energy uh, with our relations with Washington. So it does seem that it is that way, but I also trust that the Prime Minister is not so nearsighted that he can't see the wider scheme of the geopolitical rivalry. Um, so I do expect that in the coming week when he is going to be visiting New York um, and other parts in the US this week following his UNGA meeting, gen the General Assembly meeting, that um, I'm hoping that there will be a bit more of a leveling playing field. Angeline praised Malaysia's stance of not taking sides, but called for a clearer explanation of what Malaysia stands to gain from the geopolitical rivalry between the US and China. I do think that the Prime Minister is uh, doing the right thing of not choosing sides. It would not benefit Malaysia if we choose sides. It's much better if we are um, having a good, strong relationship with both Beijing and Washington and uh, finding the grey areas where we can um, find opportunities in and operate in those grey areas. Uh, but having said that, one thing that I do think the Prime Minister could improve on is, uh, you know, explaining or articulating wh what exactly Malaysia wishes it can gain out of this uh, geopolitical rivalry and where we stand. Th that doesn't necessarily mean voicing out which sides he chooses, but you know, having a clearer articulation about um, the kind of situation that he wants Malaysia to, position that he wants Malaysia to be in.